So by the time you finish this video, you're going to have a clear cut idea on how to build your lats as well as filter out all of the bullshit or outdated information in the industry. What is going on? Welcome back to the video. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or a subscriber, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. If you're a returning viewer and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It literally takes half a second and you subscribe to a lot more science-backed and real information that's not outdated and will actually help you get you the fitness results that you're after. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But without further ado, let's get into how to actually build the lats. Now, just as a disclaimer, building your lats isn't going to inherently give you a slimmer waist. You are going to get a slimmer waist mainly by losing body fat. And after you have accomplished that, it's going to be mainly determined by genetics, um, but de determined by your bone structure and your anatomy and all that. So there's nothing else you can change outside of getting surgical uh, intervention. And in this video, we're going to be going over a chock full of information. So by the time you finish this video, you're going to have a clear cut idea on how to build your lats as well as filter out all of the bullshit or outdated information in the industry. And of course, I'm going to have timestamps in the description if you do want to skip around, but I do highly encourage you to watch the video in its entirety if you want to get all of the information that you need to start building your lats and start seeing the progress that you want. And specifically in this video, we're going to be going over the function of the lats and their anatomy as it relates to training. We're going to be going over cues to keep in mind when you're training your lats so that you can get the most out of your exercises and workouts. We're going to be going over five common lat training mistakes or it's just simply outdated information that you've probably heard being repeated in the industry. And of course, we're going to be going over three exercises to do instead. And keep in mind that with the combination of the cues and these exercises examples that I'm going to be showing you, you're going to be on a much better path to train your lats and you can even come up with exercises on your own as long as you understand the functional anatomy and how these muscles function so that you can actually apply it to your workouts and come up with new exercises because as long as you understand the movement mechanics of muscles, you can pretty much train them however you want. And before we dive into the topic of this video, I do want to give a quick shout out to N1 by Coach Chasm and Paul Carter. These two gentlemen have been great inspirations and also huge educational resources for me in teaching me what I know today so that I can ultimately pass on this knowledge to you. So go ahead and give their accounts a follow. They give out such good, consistent, and up-to-date information on functional anatomy and biomechanics and how to properly train for hypertrophy or muscle growth. And now that we have all of that addressed, let's get into the topic of this video. And firstly, we have to talk about the lats function and anatomy because in order to understand how to best train a muscle, we have to understand what it looks like and what it does so that we can pick the appropriate exercises to train that specific muscle. So commonly known as the lats or its full name, the latissimus dorsi, it inserts onto the bicepital groove on the humerus or your upper arm bone around right here. And then it originates, it actually has a few origination points. So one of them being the inferior angle of the scapula. So kind of that bottom portion of the scapula or your shoulder blade. It also originates on the thoracolumbar aponeurosis, which is basically the uh, one of the vertebrae on your spine uh, towards kind of like your lower back. And then the last point of origin is your iliac crest or the top of that big bony part of your hips. So as you can see, it's a freaking huge muscle. It's what gives a lot of bodybuilders and a lot of people who train it properly that good V taper, which can lead to the illusion of a slimmer waist. Because if you give yourself more of a taper, if you build that V taper up, you give yourself the illusion of a slimmer waist. And basically, if you look at a picture of the lats, it's a huge freaking muscle and it attaches to all of these three points, but it is further divided into these three regions, which is why uh, it is relevant to uh, have these in the point of discussion. So now, according to the research done by N1, there are three divisions to the lats, which I will throw up a picture here. So firstly, we have the thoracic lats named after the thoracic region of the spine, which is basically, in simple terms, your mid-back. Next, we have the lumbar lats, which is named after your lumbar spine or basically your lower back. And then lastly, we have the iliac lats named after the iliac crest, or that top blade portion of your hip bone. And then again, according to the research done by N1, 
the last main function is going to be humoral depression. So humoral meaning you're humorous and depression going down, which actually segues nicely into some cues to keep in mind when training your lats. So whenever you're training your lats, we want to make sure that we are pulling from out in front and not directly up overhead. This is because the lats, as you can see in the picture, they attach to your humerus right here, and then they attach to various parts of your spine. So it's going to pull your arm down. And when you pull from a directly overhead position, this is going to advantage other back muscles. And this is not to say that the lats aren't going to be working, but again, in the context of hypertrophy and muscle growth, we want to be targeting the muscle that we want to be training the most so that it gets the most amount of tension and it gets that stimulus to grow. Secondly, we want to make sure that we are keeping a neutral spine. And as with any neutral spine cue, we also want to make sure that we are bracing the core while we are lifting. The main reason for this is because the lats, again, they go from your spine all the way to your humerus. So they wrap around your rib cage. So if you do any sort of spinal extension or flexion, you're going to disadvantage the lats and start to involve other back muscles, which again, it's going to take away tension from the lats. Thirdly, we don't want to be pulling our elbow behind our body because again, the lats don't do any sort of shoulder blade retraction. So when you do shoulder blade retraction, you're going to involve other back muscles. And again, this is going to take away tension from the lats. And so we just want to be making sure that we don't drive the elbow behind past the body. And also something to think about if we think about our muscles, just like rubber bands that attach to two points on our body. If we were to pull our arm behind our back, you can actually see that the rubber band would just be loose, which means it won't get as much tension if we replace the rubber band with the lats. And then fourth cue, we want to think about driving our elbow down toward the hip rather than back. Because again, if we just think about driving back, we're going to more than likely drive our elbows all the way back. Whereas we think about driving it down toward the hip, it will prevent us from driving our elbows all the way behind us. And also it will help you cue that humoral depression rather than humoral extension. Next cue to keep in mind is that we want to be making sure that our elbow is close to the body because as we saw from the picture of the lats, it attaches onto your humerus right here. So as you come out to the side, you actually disadvantage it because you're actually shortening the muscle already and it's not going to get um, as much advantage to do the work versus the other back muscles on your body. So again, we wanna make sure that our arms are in front and elbows close to the body so that the lats actually wrap around the body and get a good stretch and then we drive. All right, now that we have all of the general cues in place and we know the different subdivisions of the lats, we're gonna put the two together and talk about how to train each specific division. And now holding all of the other cues constant, the only way to target the three subdivisions of the lats is gonna be changing your arm angle relative to your body. So from top to bottom, again, it's gonna be thoracic, lumbar, and iliac. And a good way I like to reference or remember which arm angle to best targets what specific area of the lats is basically thinking about how the arm angle crosses that section of the body. So personally, I like to think about this in terms of a seesaw. So at the very top, we have thoracic and we want to think about pulling with our arm facing down as if we were to have weight on our hands. And then next lumbar, as we kind of go down, as we add weight onto this side of the seesaw, this other side is going to tip up. So lumbar, we're going to make sure that we have rel a relatively straight arm. And then lastly, iliac, as we go lower, because we're adding weight onto this side of the seesaw, this other side is going to go up. So iliac is going to be around up here in terms of arm angle. And again, we don't want to be going directly overhead, but rather somewhere around here, around 120 degrees. All right, now that we have that in mind, let's go over five common lat training mistakes or just simply outdated information that's constantly repeated and we'll address each of those point by point. So number one, using the traditional lat pull down. Now, after having discussed the previous cues of training your lats, we can see why the traditional lat pull down isn't so good at targeting the lats. Firstly, the traditional pull down has you taking a pretty wide grip, which again, we want a tucked elbow that's close to the side of your bodies if we're training the lats rather than a wide grip. Secondly, that wide grip is going to have you naturally flaring your elbows out and you're going to drive your elbows way back out here, which again is going to advantage other back muscles versus the lats. Thirdly, your traditional lat pulldown has you pulling from 
directly overhead, which again is going to get some shoulder blade elevation and rotation. And that doesn't best advantage the lats. Again, we want that neutral spine and we want to make sure that our arm is starting out in front of our bodies. Fourthly, because of that overhead position, we're more than likely going to extend the spine, which again, that is going to disadvantage the lats. We want that neutral spine and braced core. Second common lat training mistake is going to be arm path. Uh, I see a lot of people do good rolls and good movements. However, if we want to best target the lats, we want to really pay attention to the arm path. And like I said, we want to make sure that our elbows aren't flared all the way out versus a lot of other rowing motions you see, which have you drive the elbows all the way back. Again, that's going to involve other back muscles like your traps and your rhomboids versus the lats. We want to make sure that we are just pulling our elbows to the side of our bodies. And contrary to popular belief, more range of motion isn't always better. In the context of hypertrophy and muscle growth, we want to make sure that we are using an appropriate range of motion to train the muscle that we want to train. Another thing to mention with arm path is that you can have your arms at the side of your body, but if you drive your elbows all the way back behind your body, that is going to advantage other back muscles again. So we really want to make sure that we are just pulling at the sides of our body and not pulling our elbows all the way back. Number three, ditch the old adage of doing a wider grip pull down or a row is going to result in a wider back. And truth be told, I used to believe in this as well. But as we have gone over in the previous points, we can see that the wider grip you go, it's going to be actually less lats. And again, this isn't to say that this is a bad movement and you're going to get back cancer from it, but it's just not targeting the lats as much as you think it does. And it's going to involve your traps, rhomboids. And if you want to be training your lats and growing your lats, then you need to be picking movements that really nail that muscle. Fourth common lat training mistake is using the baby handle, which I will throw up a picture here. And the main reason for this is that this handle is just simply way too small for a lot of people's structures. Because when you use a grip that's too close, you just can't get as much range of motion as you would if you were to use a properly spaced handle. The super narrow grip also puts your shoulders in an internally rotated position. So it doesn't line up the force quite well as if you were to just pull from straight back. So ditch the baby handles. If your gym has handles that are about shoulder width, swap it out for those, or you can use those straight bars, attach a couple of D handles and wrap them around the bar so that you get about shoulder width grip, or you can just use a single handle and just do it one side at a time. All right. And common lat training mistake number five is going to be using full body momentum in your rows. And this one doesn't really have much to do with anatomy. It's just stop training like an asshole and stop throwing your body around thinking that just because you move more weight, you're going to build bigger muscles. Because when we want to properly train a muscle, we want to be taking that muscle through its full movement pattern. And so when we think about the lats or any back muscle for that matter, it's going to primarily do some sort of rowing or pull down motion. And any movement you get of the torso is not going to contribute to extra back growth. So stop training your rows and your pull downs like a flailing fish train them properly and you'll start seeing the progress that you want. And now after having gone through all of that, we're going to go through three different exercises you should do instead if you want to target your lats. And keep in mind, yes, three exercises are enough. As long as you're training hard enough with these exercises, you're going to see the growth that you're after. You don't need to do five bajillion sets of 10 different exercises to see growth. You just need to be efficient with your training by picking good movements that target the muscle that you want and also training hard enough and close enough to failure. So first up, we have the landmine thoracic row. I really love this movement. It's one of my favorites for the thoracic lats, mainly because the natural arc of the landmine is going to naturally get you to drive your elbow towards your hip. The only drawback to this is that you don't really get a lot of bracing and you'll just have to use a box or some sort of bench like I have in the video here. Second exercise here is going to be the hammer strength step back lat row. And then this second exercise is going to be for the lumbar lats, because as we can see with the arm angle, it's about nine degrees and that's going to train the lumbar lats. And I believe I first saw this on Paul Carter's page and it is such a money lat movement, to be honest. And the main benefit it offers up is changing up the resistance profile. So resistance profile is basically just a fancy way of saying at which point of the exercise does it feel hardest. And with most lat exercises, it's going to feel pretty easy at the stretch position and feel very hard as you get closer to that fully shortened position. And when you do these hammer strength step back lat rolls, you actually switch it around so that it feels harder over here and easier when you get closer to your body. 
And then last exercise is going to be cable iliac lat pull downs. As you can see, we are starting with a higher arm angle. So that's going to target the iliac lat or the lowest portion of the lat. So I really like this machine if you have it, but if not, you can always set this up at a cable crossover machine or some sort of cable machine that you have at your gym. And just to reiterate all the cues, we want to make sure that we are always pulling from in front when we want to target the lats. We want to make sure that we have a neutral spine and a braced core. We don't want to be overly flexing or extending our spine. We want to make sure that we don't pull the elbow past the body to best target the lats. We just want to stop right at the side of your body. Uh, we also want to think about driving the elbow down toward the hip rather than driving back. And really, that's about it. That's all you need to know for training your lats. Hopefully, this video has helped you get a better idea of what the lats actually do and how to best pick exercises that actually train the lats. And that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more, and I will catch you in the next one.